Normally, I don't talk about NXT on Off The Script. If it's major enough, I will definitely discuss it. But normally, when it comes to NXT, there really isn't anything major to where it would warrant a top story. I think this definitely should be the top story of today's Off The Script. Not only does it change an entire storyline, but it absolutely drastically changes the main event for TakeOver Brooklyn on Saturday, August 18th. Major NXT injury could drastically change TakeOver Brooklyn number four. WWE's developmental brand has just launched. Do we even call it a developmental brand right now? I mean, are you still calling it a developmental brand? I'm not. I'm not calling it a developmental brand. I'm calling it the number one brand in WWE. Or like Tommaso Ciampa says, the A-Show. Which, it's always been the A-Show anyway. Even before he was the NXT champion. WWE's developmental brand, quote-unquote, has just launched, launched an NXT UK version and held their first tapings last week in Cambridge. While the company were busy making history on one side of the Atlantic, things were rolling as usual on the other. On August 18, NXT TakeOver returns to Brooklyn one night before Summer Scam. SummerSlam is on August 18th. Remember, Summer Scam is on August 19th. The yellow brand doesn't have pay-per-views as regularly as the main roster does, and TakeOver events usually happen ahead of the biggest events for WWE's main roster. Summer Scam is arguably the second biggest main roster pay-per-view of the year, so of course NXT stars will also get to wrestle at the Barclays Center ahead of the lamest party of the summer. However, one massive name may not be on the card after picking up an injury at a live show on Saturday. And we are just hearing about it now, a week later. I guess WWE wanted the storyline to play out on television, or maybe they didn't know the severity of the injury going into the television taping on Wednesday, and now they got the dire news and really can't do anything about it. According to PW Insider and the Wrestling Observer, Aleister Black is currently out of action after undergoing surgery for an injury he suffered in Las Vegas. The former NXT champion was apparently quote-unquote crotched by Tommaso Ciampa, the man who currently holds the developmental brand's top prize. So on top of losing his belt to Tommaso Ciampa last week, Black now could also miss TakeOver and lose his opportunity to win the title back. In fact, a huge match was rumored to headline the show, but that now is in serious doubt. We all kind of figured after this week's TV tapings, if you guys want to go watch my review, it is on the channel right now. If you guys watched the TV taping this past Wednesday, you kind of know where they were going with this for the main event of TakeOver Brooklyn. Although the match had not been officially confirmed or announced, it was believed that Black would face Ciampa and his long-term rival Johnny Gargano in a triple threat match for the NXT Heavyweight Championship. Honestly, if it does happen, that could seriously be a contender for match of the year. And Johnny Gargano has been pumping out a lot of those lately, and you could probably add Tommaso Ciampa to that list right behind him as well. And it could be Black's last match in NXT. A number of stars would be, are, are, are rumored right now to be making the call-up to the main roster, and Aleister Black is indeed one of them. Hopefully, this surgery that he is supposedly supposed to undergo uh, won't keep him out of takeover later this month, because that's an awful lot of riding on the reported main event of that show. There's a lot riding on that main event. A lot riding on that main event that I don't think WWE could really book and really get out of with an Aleister Black injury. This is terrible timing. This is absolutely devastating to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number 4. I read this. I wanted to talk about it. But I'm not going to go into much detail because 
it, it, it seems like the reports are 50-50. He could miss takeover, but then the reports are giving you hope that the surgery might not be uh, that severe, and he might not miss it at all. If he doesn't miss it at all, fantastic. The main event goes on as scheduled, and we get Tommaso Ciampa hopefully walking out the NXT champion and retaining that title. If he misses the show, that may be the very last match that we see of Aleister Black in NXT number one, because the same thing happened to Drew McIntyre. He was supposed to get a rematch against Andrade Cien almost for the NXT championship. He got hurt in that match. He was out for four or five months and then miraculously showed up on the main roster and had nothing to do with NXT anymore, and he didn't get his title shot. Aleister Black, if injured, may be following the same road as Drew McIntyre to either Raw or SmackDown Live. The fact that he's hurt and he might miss the show. Yes, we don't get the main event that we all were thinking about and speculating on. But the biggest thing about this is... I don't know if WWE could book themselves out of this injury. There is absolutely nobody right now that makes sense that you could plug into Aleister Black's spot and continue a triple threat match. If Aleister Black misses this match, it will more than likely be Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano one-on-one. They will probably do a stipulation of some sort. WWE does have one minor out in this. The match wasn't announced. The match was not announced on television. So WWE, for right now, based on what we see on television, they haven't announced this yet. So Aleister Black, per TV, doesn't need to get a title match because he wasn't announced. We assume that he would. We assume that he will. But if it doesn't come from William Regal's mouth, then it's not official. But then again, if you think that way, Johnny Gargano really doesn't deserve the NXT Championship match either. And William Regal will probably be putting him in that match A, out of pity, and B, because he doesn't want this nonsense to continue going on at full sail. And he wants it over and done with. And that's where the feud will go. If Aleister Black doesn't make Brooklyn, this feud is over. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa and their feud is over. Now, I don't want that to happen. I think everybody needs to be preying upon a fucking star that Aleister Black doesn't miss TakeOver. If Aleister Black misses TakeOver, not only do we not get the match, not only does this great storyline come to an end, but Tommaso Ciampa is going to be known as a transitional champion, and we don't want that to happen. There's only one outcome in this storyline. If it ends, it ends with Gargano winning the championship. There's no other conclusion to this. I don't know if WWE is ready to end this. I don't know if WWE is ready to give Johnny Gargano the championship. I don't know if WWE wants to take the title of Champa. He's the hottest thing in NXT right now. This couldn't have come at a worse time. I was hoping that WWE would have this go till WrestleMania. That is where the title match should come to a conclusion. Johnny and Champa, one-on-one to go against G1 Supercard. That's what I'm thinking. I don't want Tommaso Champa to be a transitional champion. I don't want him to win it and then immediately drop it to Johnny and then all because of an injury have this storyline come to an end. It's the best storyline on WWE television, period. I'm talking about Raw, SmackDown, and all of NXT. It may be one of the best storylines in wrestling, All year. Period. This is not good. This is not good. There is legitimately, and I thought about who you could plug in there. Everybody is announced. Everybody that you would want to plug into that spot has already been announced for a match in Brooklyn. And even if you do announce somebody else, it's not going to fit into the narrative. Adam Cole and Ricochet already have a match. You already announced a North American Championship match, and people are already hyped for that alone. Velveteen Dream. He's been announced to go one-on-one with EC3. You can't put Dream in that spot. EC3 doesn't deserve to be in that spot. 
Lars Sullivan, he got a shot. He hasn't even been on television up until TakeOver Brooklyn. So he doesn't fit into that role either. Unless you get someone from the main roster. But even at that point, you know, you could pick anybody from a Kevin Owens to somebody else, you know. It's not going to make sense. There's only one logical way to go about this if Aleister Black is hurt, and that is Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa one-on-one. Maybe a steel cage match. Maybe a Hell in a Cell. Maybe a ladder match. One fall to a finish with some type of six stipulation to end this thing. But I told you, I don't think Triple H wants to end this right now. I don't think WWE was in the mindset of ending this now. There's so many negatives to come out of this compared to positives. Will it still be a great takeover? Absolutely. These takeovers never disappoint. Look who the fucking supporting cast for this show is going to be. There's no way this show is going to disappoint with Aleister Black being out injured. You know? Is it going to be a great match between Johnny and Champa? Are we really going to be that heartbroken if Aleister Black doesn't be there, uh, isn't there or uh, he can't be there? Probably not. But my main concern is the storyline ending. It coming to an end months before it should really come to an end. And I feel bad for Champa. Unless WWE, unless WWE books Champa in the most diabolical heel-like way to retain this title, or uh, I don't know, I, I don't know. As a heel, we've seen him do unbelievable things. We've seen him handcuffed and beat Johnny in a last man standing match, or no DQ, street fight, whatever, you know? We've seen him pretty much pull every trick out of his bag of tricks to win the NXT Championship. What could he do? What could he do in Brooklyn to retain that title that would give Johnny another rematch? If there are people in this company that I trust, it's Triple H and his team to maybe, potentially, possibly get another match out of these two guys with Aleister Blackheart. Now, these guys and their creativity is really going to go into overdrive. What are they going to do come Brooklyn? They might have an out here. The announcement for this match has not been made. We all assume, but the announcement has not been made. WWE could scrap whatever they got planned for the next couple of weeks on NXT TV. They could, they could rewrite it with some promo package, or they could have Mauro Ronaldo do a, 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 a little spoken piece and talk about the feud instead of airing what WWE has already filmed. With the announcement of this match, again, this couldn't have come at a worse time, man. And I don't really know what else makes sense outside of a Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa one-on-one match. And if Aleister Black is really not going to make Brooklyn, this is without question his last match in NXT. He will definitely follow the Drew McIntyre road and he will end up on Raw and SmackDown whenever he is 100% healthy again. I don't even care about that. Black fits into the narrative because of what we've seen last week. But with Black not there, more negatives come out of this than positives. Like I said, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, I don't think anybody on this fucking planet is going to complain about another match between those guys, especially with a stipulation and the title on the line. But, man, oh man, oh man. Are things going to be cut short with this injury? Let me know what you guys are thinking. How would you book... The main event of TakeOver Brooklyn now with Aleister Black pretty much on a 50-50 basis here. Some say he might miss it. Some say it's not going to be that severe. We don't know for sure until we watch NXT this coming week and pay attention to what NXT right now uh, does via their social media outlets. We don't know. But that is something I wanted to get out there. Everybody's talking about it. There legitimately is no other plan right now for that except for a one-on-one match. Nothing else makes sense. Can you guys make sense of it? What would you do? What type of match? Do you want to see Champa lose the championship so soon? I don't think you guys do. Let me know what you guys think down below. This is Off The Script, episode 233, part number two for your Saturday. Don't go anywhere. We got a lot more news to come, a lot more NXT news on this episode of Off 
the script. You know, it seems like an eternity that the House of Glory officials and Austin Aries have been trying to get on the same page to make this happen. And now the time is here, August 17th. It's going down. But as part of the deal, I get to call my own shots. I get to make the matchup. And now about two weeks out, the House of Glory officials are sweating. They want to know, Austin Aries, what's your match? Well, here's what we're going to do. I'm all about doing things that have never been done before. I'm all about creating opportunity. The Impact World Title will be defended against who you ask? Anybody who wants to step in the ring with me. It's an open challenge. House of Glory, bring your best. Anybody in the New York area, step on in the ring. The invitation's open. Austin Aries, the Impact World Title. House of Glory ring, August 17th. Who's gonna step up and answer the challenge? Off this shitty fucking product by coming on here and speaking the fucking goddamn truth about this fucking filth. And I can book a better show taking a fucking dump after eating my fucking Chipotle chorizo with extra cheese. I don't give a fuck. Have I ever? Of course not. WWE is great, man. Uh, fuck you, Japan, and, uh, and the Lakers. Oh, God! Ah, Tony! Hey, 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 Tony! This is off the script. Man, I know a lot of you didn't probably even hear one word that came out of my fucking mouth. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, uh, for sure, uh, the people on iTunes and Podbean, you're probably like, JD, I can hear you because I'm fucking driving to work. I don't know what the fuck you're showing everybody that's watching you, but I can hear you. But I guarantee you the people who were watching me on YouTube didn't hear a fucking word that came out of my mouth about Aleister Black because you're too busy asking yourself, JD, why do you have Roman Reigns or a silhouette of Roman Reigns on your t-shirt? You know how Tommaso Ciampa has that Blackheart t-shirt that I would instantly buy if he put it on WWE Shop, but he won't put it on WWE Shop because he wants only one maid for himself. I went that same route and I got something made which is a limited edition of one. And I made it for myself. Because Barbershop Window won't put it up. Because Teespring won't put it up. But I got it. I got it for sure. And it's fucking excellent quality. X, I got a brand new site to get my fucking custom made t-shirts, man. Fuck a Teespring. You know? And fuck these clowns who... Oh my god, JT hates Roman Reigns, man. Look at this shit. And still not over. You're going to catch me at SummerSlam or you're going to catch me in Chicago wearing this fucking shirt. I don't give a fuck if it's crusty, old, and smelly and hasn't been washed in six days. You're going to be seeing me everywhere. At Podcast uh, Row, you're going to be, see, be seeing me at Starcast. You're going to be seeing me with Labar and Ticket True. You're going to be seeing me with Solid Monster everywhere and everywhere at SummerSlam weekend, man. Right here. This is it. Then you can probably ask me, J.D., where can I get one of those t-shirts? You can't. You can't. Maybe. Maybe I'll put them on, uh, on a website somewhere or I'll just sell them independently because they got the Off The Script logo. The Off The Script logo is on there. See? There you go, man. Uh, I love myself. This is fucking. This is fucking great, man. Oh my god, feels so good. Feels so good. It fits me good too. Yeah, can't wait to go to the supermarket and have the old lady, ooh, 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 like the blue haired cunt, right? Remember her? Oh, what is it with the uh, the, the the Roman Reigns? You know, you know. Oh, why do you have to go against your Roman Reigns for? I'm, I'm, I'm doing old lady mixed with Kevin Dunn, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever, man. I love it. It's fucking awesome. Maybe we'll figure something out, but uh, I wanted to wear it on today's show to uh, make everybody salty. 
you know, the Roman uh, detractors here, or the off-the-script detractors, the JD haters, you know, your tears make me fucking hydrated. I don't need uh, my uh, my usual cold Guinness to hydrate me. Your tears are more than enough for me. So hopefully we have uh, a bunch of them spread across SummerSlam weekend so that I could feel like fucking Popeye, you know? Anyway, enough of this fucking clown. We talked about him enough yesterday on Off The Script. If you guys missed yesterday's Off The Script, we talk about some fucking goon, WWE quote-unquote insider who tried to expose poor Roman Reigns before SummerSlam, and he failed to do so. You know, I may hate, I, I may hate Roman Reigns' character, but I'm not going to come on here and report fake news about Roman Reigns. Yeah, we all know there's an agenda. We all know that WWE hires plants and that they fuck with the audio on television, that you might be thinking you hear something, but it really is something else. You know, we, we all know that they've go- gone those lengths. To manipulate clips, to make Roman come off as a good guy when nobody really wants him or ha- or likes him, and they and they just flat out hate him. We've seen it all. There is some truth to the Roman agenda, but this guy was reportedly saying that WWE has spent five point eight million dollars on the Roman agenda by paying fans to promote Roman Reigns. It's a little outlandish if it asks me. I don't hate Roman that much to report a story about that uh, being true, but I wanted to report it just to get it out there and tell you guys it's fake, no question. The guy says he has sources, but he fails to reveal sources. I even DM'd him. I even DM'd this fucking clown. And I'm going to read some of those DMs now because I DM'd him after I had reported this on Off The Script. I I told him I have a very powerful podcast with a big following Uh, that has been against the Roman Reigns agenda for the last four years. Who are your sources? This is too big of a story to tweet out wildly like that, I told him. Quote, unquote. He tells me, can't tell you, unfortunately. As a journalist, I need to protect my sources. When the story blows up, you'll see. But for now, I have to keep it close to the vest. They're already second-guessing, telling me now that it's blowing up. So I continue on. Well, how do you know it's true? If there is anyone that wants this exposed, it's me. You got to give me more so people don't make this out to be another Johnny Bravo situation. Journalism 101, don't reveal your sources. Sorry, mate. If you don't believe me, you're simply going to end up on the wrong side of history. That's what he told me. And then lines of communication were done after that. It's a fake news story, people. Don't fall for the bullshit, even if you dislike Roman Reigns like I do here on Off The Script. So if you guys want to go check that out, link is in the annotation that you see in the top right corner, along with everything else that you might have missed. Raw, SmackDown, Off The Script Extra, where WWE officials feel like SummerSlam is lacking excitement. Do you want to know why? It's because of this man right here. Public enemy number one. That's why it's lacking excitement. And we talk about NXT as well this week. Everything you need is linked in the annotation in the top right corner of your screen. Man, I want to thank, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Daryl for the Patreon pledge that he graciously uh, shot me this week. $50 patron. He became a $50 patron. And a lot of you guys actually upped your pledge as well. Uh, You guys are fucking awesome. You're taking care of me. Uh, better than I have ever expected, man. You guys are beasts. And I promise you, uh, next week, it's been a busy weekend with House of Glory and everything I got doing th- uh, with going on with them. I'm running their YouTube channel now. I'm making sure their social media is right. I'm in charge of their Twitter. Uh, and I got to get my questions ready for Cutting Corners coming up again this week. And, you know, we got High Intensity coming up. And I got literally every aspect of the show broken down. Uh, I got about four matches through. And then obviously, obviously you've seen with the Austin Aries announcement, Austin Aries is going to be at... High Intensity at a House of Glory show. I'm going to be calling a fucking Austin Aries match where he puts the Impact World Heavyweight title on the line against a secret opponent. It's an open challenge. So secret, I don't even know who it is. So you're going to have to find out come August 17th. Now, I mean, it's crazy how, you know, they are making this show. And I don't want you guys to miss it. Apparently... Uh, people are getting lost in New York on August 17th. I don't know, wh- wh- where, where are you guys going that you're getting lost? 
You're getting lost somewhere in Queens. Where the fuck are you going? There's only one place to be on August 17th. You better be fucking sitting next to me drinking a Guinness. You better be watching Austin Aries defend the Impact World Heavyweight title. You better be watching fucking Sammy the Clown Callahan get his ass kicked by Low Key. That's where you gotta be. HOGWrestling.net. I feel like a fucking spokesman. If I didn't sell you on the show there, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong. HOGWrestling.net. And go watch Cutting Corners on their YouTube channel, man. Good shit. Good shit. I got good people supporting me. I got good, I got good people giving me an opportunity over there. I love every fucking one of them. Red and Brian and Jason and Dean and, and, and everybody. The whole roster. Fucking good guys over there, man. So make sure you guys stop by on August 17th. Enzo's going to be there. If you guys enjoy that type of thing. I know I don't. But he's going to be there. You know? And I got a special guest coming to see me personally. We're going to be doing a pre-show together. I can't tell you who it is because I'm going to let him announce it first. And you guys will know who it is. Just keep an eye on social media. Anyway. Now that that's out of the way, let me get through this uh, other nonsense here. You guys know the deal. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. We are nearing 22,400. You know, I've seen, you know, you know what, you know what bothers me? Wrestle Talk has 500,000 plus subscribers and only 30,000 Twitter followers. Either they don't promote their Twitter enough or I am just that beastly because I only have 95. Thank you. We just hit 95. 95,000 subs and I got 22,400 Twitter followers. Yet they're verified. How the fuck are they verified and someone like me who has much more social media reach is not verified? And I'm sure I got way more imposter accounts on Twitter than they do. Can someone please figure that out for me? You know, I enjoy me some Ollie Davis and a Luke Owen every now and then. I do think they uh, are borderline sucking the tip of the cock, but not all the way. But still... I still enjoy their take, and they're very uh, outgoing, and they got good charisma. More charisma than this man. (laughs) You fucking assholes. At JD from NY206 on Twitter. Hit that subscribe button down below. Become one of the 95,000 plus on this YouTube channel, man. Please make sure you guys do that, and turn on the bell while you're at it for all notifications. Barbershopwindow.com. You ain't going to get this shirt anywhere. But you can still get his empire is still not over. That's the B design to this one. That's the approved design for this one. That's the changed design. That was supposed to be this one. Fucking barbershop window won't put it on sale, motherfucker. I got around that. But I know you guys would much rather have this one. Then I got some of the goons who were saying, No, but I won't wear Roman Reigns on my shirt, man. It's talking negatively about him. You should want to wear it, clown. And his empire is still not over and 14 other designs on top of that. You can go get the Mahal Monitor shirt right there. The Failure Raha t-shirt. You would have been a failure either way. They do it for Roman. Eat, sleep, bench, and repeat. And I want to shout out my boy Sal Rex. Sal motherfucking Rex, bro. This guy gave me the hottest new design for SummerSlam, man. I can't wait for uh, his little graphic so I could put it on the fucking podcast. Summer Scam shirts will be on sale next week. <laughs> oh, my God. Ain't I great? Fuck a Jeff Jarrett, motherfucker. Ain't I great? you damn right. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Harry's, listen, you better not show her. You better not show up standing next to me at these meet and greets with a fucking neck beard, bro. Better get Harry's. I'm going to be clean shaven. I'm going to be using Harry's. You better be using Harry's. Harry's.com slash script. Uh, if I'm a little wild today, it means uh, I had two cups of coffee and a Red Bull coconut and berry flavor today and i had a wawa meatball sandwich for lunch so i'm ready to go man i'm fucking rip roaring ready to go over here this might be uh, a very weird bizarre episode of off the script harrys.com slash script blade handle shave gel and protective case make harry's your wingman today harrys.com slash script 
And for the fine people of Audible, thank you so very much for sponsoring the podcast. You guys are best friends of Off The Script. They've been with me longer than anybody. AudibleTrial.com slash Off The Script. Make sure you guys get your one month free of their service and one free audiobook of your choice. Please do so, man. 200,000 audiobooks to choose from. Who the fuck doesn't want a free audiobook, man? I know. I, I would want a free audiobook. Everybody loves free. It costs you nothing to support the show. So there you go. AudibleTrial.com slash off the script. And if you guys want to become a Patreon, Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Thank you to Daryl for giving me a beautiful $50 pledge. I just got one now. I just looked at my phone. Brett. Brett L with a $10 donation, a $10 pledge, man. You guys are fucking beast. You guys are absolutely beast with the donations and the pledges, man. I don't know what to do with you guys. You guys are kicking ass. Daryl, thank you so much for the $50, man. And Lativia Ponder with a $65 pledge. You guys are absolutely out of this world Thank you guys so very much for everything. If you guys want to become a Patreon, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Let's get into the fucking news, man, because I got a lot of it. I got a lot of it. Uh, let's keep on with the NXT theme, man. Let's keep on with the NXT theme. Um, Braun Strowman. I love me some Braun Strowman. I love me some uh, Monster in the Bank or the Monster Among Men, whatever the fuck you uh, want to call him. Uh, we are looking to Braun Strowman. To be the Clark Kent of SummerSlam. You better put on that fucking cape, motherfucker. Because Roman Reigns is going to be playing Lex Luthor at SummerSlam. We need our Superman to come in and do the deed. Okay? Or if you want to put Braun Strowman in the Batman suit. And Roman Reigns is... uh, He ain't the Joker because he he, he isn't that good. I I would not give him that role. Uh, I would make Roman Reigns... Uh, I would probably put him as, I don't, I want to say the Riddler, but I don't want to, I don't want to say the Riddler because I still like the Riddler. Penguin? Nah, he doesn't fit that role. I would give Kevin Owens the Penguin. Who could we make him? I don't know, man. You know, you know what? Just for the sake of time and not spending too much time on this corny joke I'm about to tell, I would give him uh, the Riddler position. So, Braun Strowman could be Batman, and Roman Reigns can play the Riddler at SummerSlam. That's what I would do. Braun Strowman explains why the main roster will never be outshined by NXT. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Mr. Strowman! What the fuck are you taking, bro? Because I would love some... If those are the answers you get, uh, you are given uh, these people. And, and by the way, if you have the opportunity to interview a WWE contracted athlete, these are the questions that you're asking. Do you think NXT is better than the main roster? What do you expect the answer to be from these people? You think they're going to downgrade the main roster? You think Braun Strowman is going to risk position on Monday Night Raw? Of course not. So don't even ask these questions if you are not going to get the answer that you are seeking. With SummerSlam rapidly approaching, the stars of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live are certainly going to feel the pressure. It's not about just impressing the biggest or impressing at the biggest party of the summer, which happens to be one of WWE's big four pay-per-views. Instead, it's all about the event that's going to take place the night before. NXT TakeOver Brooklyn! NXT TakeOver events have continued to grow in size as popularity increases and the roster becomes more stacked with elite talent. Ever since its inception, it's come to nobody's surprise that many fans often prefer NXT's offering more so, more so than the main roster. Puts on the following evening. Has there uh, been, in recent memory, a main roster show better than an NXT TakeOver show? Uh, not this year, there hasn't. You know, I don't think there was one last year either. So, this very well might be the case again coming into New York City. There's a great deal of negativity heading into SummerSlam. Um, I'll give you one guess as to why uh, I'm wearing him. And primarily revolving around Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns is the main reason. While the excitement is through the roof for TakeOver. 
Evidently, it's a massive platform for the NXT stars to show that they deserve to be one of WWE's major two brands, and the fact that they steal the show consistently suggests that they belong there. However, Braun Strowman doesn't agree with the popular sentiment that the main roster is often outshined. The monster among men puts his Money in the Bank contract on the line in Brooklyn against Kevin Owens, and he didn't really have a solid NXT run like so many other big names. While he was at the Performance Center, the majority of his NXT run saw him play one of Adam Rose's Rosebuds. Now he's one of the top stars on Monday Night Raw and on the verge of becoming the Universal Champion. Even though NXT has some huge names and is consistently putting on a great product, Strowman doesn't believe it's outshining Raw or SmackDown Live. When speaking to SPN Action, whatever the fuck that is or whoever the fuck they are, he claimed that the hole is too small in NXT. That's what she said. The hole is too small for talents to get through and shine more than anyone else. He said, and I quote, You know, it's hard to tell, said Strowman, because we're so studded right now on the main roster that there's a lot of talented athletes in NXT, but what they have done there right now, I don't see anything outshining what we on the main roster have done. I don't believe for a second that this man believes what he is saying at all. Let's look at this year alone. NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Was it better than the Royal Rumble? Absolutely. fucking lutely Absolutely. Aleister Black and Adam Cole in an Extreme Rules match. Johnny Gargano versus Andrade Cien Almas. That's all you needed there. That's all you really needed there. Then you got TakeOver New Orleans. Do I even need to repeat what happened there? No. I don't. Was it better than WrestleMania? Fucking 100% absolutely. No doubt about it. Now we're looking at Chicago. For Money in the Bank weekend. Was it better than Money in the Bank? (laughs) Oh my God. Now we're looking at Brooklyn. Hasn't even happened yet. But I could look inside the crystal ball and see the outcome. Uh, Magic 8-Ball. Is NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number four going to be better? Then SummerSlam. Go fuck yourself, Magic 8-Ball. Very doubtful. Fuck you. There's a reason why you're a dead gimmick, motherfucker. Now, he says, not everyone is going to agree with Strowman's claim. Uh, At least uh, he is saying what he needs to say, not to get himself in hot water. Uh, Triple H obviously won't agree with what Strowman says. Everybody's trying to make it through this big hole, he said. Everybody's in a huge funnel in developmental. I was in it at one point, and and you're just swirling around trying to get through that tiny little hole, end quote. If anything, this might act as motivation for the NXT stars to go out in Brooklyn and steal a show over a marquee event like SummerSlam. They don't have to try too hard. (laughs) They don't have to try too hard. SummerSlam is Extreme Rules 2.0. We got... Most of the matches announced are rematches that we've already seen this year. Meanwhile, with TakeOver, we got matches that at least have happened, but there's a reason for them happening again. You know? There's no reason for anything happening at SummerSlam to happen again because it wasn't good the first time and it's not going to be good the second time. Or it wasn't good the first time, the second time, or the third time, and some of these things were seen for the fourth fucking time. A.K.A. Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. I think Braun Strowman uh, gave the most political answer possible. Obviously, he didn't want to get into hot water. I don't know why these people are lucky enough. I don't know who the fuck these people are getting WWE contracted talent on their shows. But if you're lucky enough to get a contracted talent, why don't you ask some good fucking questions, please? That's the best you got for Braun Strowman, knowing the type of answer he's going to give. Come on, SPN action. Fuck out of here, man. That question had no action. Give me something better. Strowman ain't going to give you the answer, and I don't even think Strowman believes the bullshit that came out of his own mouth. TakeOver is going to be better than SummerSlam, just like it is every single fucking time with every major pay-per-view. Keep it on the NXT train. I promise you this is not the NXT review. NXT to FS1 rumors. Big update. 
on if NXT is going to be coming off the WWE Network. In recent weeks, there have been rumors about NXT being added to FS1 or FS2. Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 for the goons out there. It would make sense for the folks over at Fox because they are going to lose a lot of UFC programming. Uh, that's okay. You could hire me for WWE, and I'd, uh, I'd do a cutting corner show for WWE. And, and I would ask better questions than SPN action. Anyway, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, the people that are involved in the process say that NXT on FS1 is not happening. Good. Good. There's a reason why we all subscribe to the WWE Network. It ain't because of uh, WWE Raw or SmackDown or their pay-per-views, which are fucking god-awful. It's because of NXT. And it's because of the old school classics. And it's because of some of their great do- documentaries that they have on there. Uh, by the way, have you guys seen the Walk with Elias? Uh, you know, I, I guess uh, filming that they did. Documentary. Did, did, you, did you guys did you take a look at that? I haven't watched that yet. I haven't watched it yet. I gotta make time to watch it. Uh, what I watched instead this week it was uh, I watched for the first time uh, A Quiet Place. You know, that movie that uh, very... Uh, uh, I guess, in a very similar way, reminded me of Until Dawn. I couldn't wait to watch what the fucking creature looked like. I was hoping it looked like a fucking Wendigo. I don't know what the fuck these things look like. It looked like, it, it looked like a half alien, half venom mix. Uh, I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on in this movie, man, but it was fucking fantastic. For a movie that had barely any dialogue, uh, I was on the edge of my fucking seat with this thing. You know? But it, it very much reminded me of Until Dawn. And I love that game, and I wouldn't mind playing that game again on stream for you guys. That game was fucking great, you know? But that movie was fantastic, man. The one thing I didn't like about the movie is where the fuck did these things come from? What hit their, uh, their town or their city that it was left in shambles, and you got to walk around not making a peep? Where did these fucking things come from? Why is it the end of the world, so to speak, with these fucking things, you know, uh, taking over, you know? That's the only thing we didn't get. And if I missed it, I'm a fucking goon. But I don't think uh, it was really uh, documented in the movie. And I didn't really go on any website to find the origins of these fucking creatures. But it was a great fucking movie, man. And I don't know why, I don't know why I'm talking about A Quiet Place because, uh, you know, uh, I just went off on, on a completely different topic. And here I am talking about NXT. Um, it's not happening. FS1. At this point, WWE is interested in keeping the show exclusive to the WWE Network. Good shit. The NXT shows are an incentive for fans to keep su- subscribing to the network. Clearly, just like I said. But a move to FS1 would mean a wider distribution and could lead to larger crowds at live events. So obviously there is a positive if it goes to FS1. At the point uh, with FS1 and NXT, the only talk about secondary programming uh, that has been coming to FS1 from WWE is a studio show like SportsCenter or a SportsCenter-like show. The idea is to do a pregame show on Fridays before SmackDown Live, and a post-game show on Sundays after pay-per-views. There has also been talk of doing a studio show on Wednesday similar to UFC Tonight. The people at Fox say that there are no announcements planned regarding new programming. Furthermore, the people involved in Fox WWE say that the only deal is for the in-ring programming of SmackDown Live, and there have been no talks about adding additional in-ring programming. Obviously, the studio shows are not considered in-ring programming, But if the studio programming does become a reality, it will be interesting to see how they format these shows because WWE would probably want to do a kayfabe version of what UFC does, but FS1 programming deals uh, with real sports news. See, this is is the killer here for this, you know, FS1 pre-show, post-show type deal that they possibly might want WWE to do. I... Want to see something like that, but WWE, the reason why they canceled Talking Smack, and this is not the only time we mentioned this, the only reason why they canceled Talking Smack was because it was too real. It kind of broke the fourth wall. So WWE isn't going to give you a real talk show with real news and real rumors and personalities that are going to fucking cut real promos and act like they're real selves. You're not going to see that there. So if you're going to do a fucking kayfabe version of it, you're just wasting our time. WWE is going to limit what you see on that show. And I don't know how far I'm going to go out of my way to watch a fucking pre-show to SmackDown Live. Half the time, SmackDown Live isn't even fucking good. So what makes you think I want to watch a one-hour pre-show for something that ultimately will not deliver in two hours on Fox? And the other thing here 
is Fox don't really want to talk about additional programming yet because they don't know how WWE is going to do on Fox. If WWE is blowing the ratings through the roof, then at that point they might want to add new programming or additional programming. And they might scheme to come up with something additional for their stations by adding content. That's the way a right business works. You see how they perform, and if they perform well, then you deserve to get more programming and more distribution. Maybe we could see a takeover on FS1, you know? But then that comes with the possibility of takeover having fucking commercial breaks integrated into it. We don't want that, you know? So, from what I gather here, NXT not going to be on FS1, keep it on the WWE Network, and keep it exclusive for people to sign up for the network. That's the main priority for WWE right now, you know? NXT, would they benefit from FS1? Absolutely. They might even possibly go live on FS1. But at that point, then, it doesn't become a developmental brand if you put it on FS1 and if you go live with it. It's not really a developmental brand anymore. It's not a developmental brand right now, but it certainly wouldn't be a developmental brand then. It's going to be a third brand. So the incentive of moving to a Raw or SmackDown, uh, if it's got a major network deal, uh, is not really going to be that great. Because realistically, who on NXT now is going to want to go to Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live? Have you seen the house of horrors that those shows are? You're going to want to stay with NXT. And it's going to be treated like a major show. So why would you want to get up, pack your bags, and go to Monday Night Raw? You, know, you might make more money, but who the fuck would like to leave the confines of NXT where you're treated good? And you're giving good storylines and your intelligence is not insulted, you know? I understand it's everybody's dream to main event WrestleMania, but, you know, just look at what's going on right now. What did Braun Strowman say? There's a small hole of people trying to get on TV. That small hole becomes even smaller when you go up to the main roster. Nothing's going to happen for you immediately up there. Stay in NXT as long as you can, please. Like Adam Sandler in, uh, in Billy Madison. You know, when he goes to the ninth grade, when he goes to high school, he takes that fucking fat kid, you know. Don't go to high school. Stay here for as long as you can. That's what I get from uh, that. But NXT to FS1, not happening yet. What will be happening is the return of Hulk Hogan. A few weeks ago, rumors surfaced surrounding Hulk Hogan's potential return to the WWE. The former star left the company in disgrace three years ago when his contract was terminated following a massive scandal. Pretty much every reference to Hulk was removed from the WWE website. His merchandise was taken off the shop and his entry into the Hall of Fame was taken down. Until recently, it was cleared where Hogan and everything that happened to him was reinstated. He was reinstated into the Hall of Fame. He was welcomed back into the WWE family. You know? It was unclear if Hogan would have anything to do with the promotion ever again. And then, like that, everything just started to come back for Hulk Hogan. Like I said, reinstated into the Hall of Fame. Potentially back on television. Signed a new contract with the company. He's back. The Hulkster is back. WWE revealed their decision hours before Extreme Rules on July 15th. I was actually at Terrace on 5th with Shane Douglas when the news broke. And then later that night, he was invited backstage at the pay-per-view. Hogan reportedly apologized to the current WWE talent before the show, attempting to clear the air, but he was met with a mixed reaction, which is hardly surprising. Ever since the apology, the ex-wrestler has been spotted in the same cities where WWE has been taping their weekly Raw shows, further fueling speculation that he'd be making a return. When it says Hogan was met with mixed reaction, it was because some, like Titus and The New Day, felt his... Apology was not genuine. You know, it was in a way where he didn't come off as he was sincerely sorry. And from what I gathered from everything that I read, he was not sorry that he got, you know, or he was not sorry for what he said, but, you know, he was also not sorry for getting caught. He was more concerned about getting caught than genuinely apologizing. And that's why Titus, you know, went on a rant about Hogan being back and why he didn't really agree with it. That's why the New Day said they're neither here or there. You know, they want to see action before they welcome him back. And you really can't fault any of them for feeling the way that they do. You can't fault them at all. In fact, you know, we, we, we rag on Titus all the time. 
takes balls to say what he said there and then walk out of Extreme Rules in, in a manner that he did. But we don't know how those people felt because I'm not uh, of, of black skin color. So I don't know how I felt. I, I knew Hogan fucked up. I knew what he said was fucking terrible. And nobody should ever speak that way to anybody behind closed doors, in public, whatever. You should not be speaking that way. You know, Hogan was more concerned that he got caught instead of actually genuinely apologizing for something that he did that hurt everybody, not just a Titus O'Neil or a New Day. He hurt and embarrassed everybody. He embarrassed the WWE. He, he, he embarrassed himself. He embarrassed his family. But he was also illegally recorded. You got to keep in mind that the man was illegally recorded. But you can't blame Titus O'Neil for that. And you can't blame the New Day for that. I don't know if those people will ever welcome Hulk Hogan back. There are people that don't want to see Hogan ever again. And you can't blame them for that. But this was an inevitability. I don't give a fuck if I see Hogan or not back on television. I don't even give a fuck what Hogan does in his personal life. I don't give a shit about Hulk Hogan anymore. But the reason why he's back, no matter how fucked up, his actions were, which they were. This is a business. Hogan is going to make money for WWE, and that's all they care about. You know? Three years, they felt, as a business, he punished. Oh, he was punished and paid the, paid the crime, or paid the time, did the time, whatever. His punishment was enough for three years. You know, that's them. That's their decision. We're going to have to live with it either way, because he's going to be back on television. Now... It's still not known when Hulkamania will be back on TV, but it's very likely to happen. So much so, apparently, that WWE are planning something big for his comeback. Now, according to my buddy Ticket Drew, Drew Bedalla, who has broken a number of stories recently, and I actually told him personally, I'm like, bro, you could, you could get into this, uh, this uh, news and rumors business. You seem to be uh, dropping exclusive stories all over the place. You know, Mr. Exclusive is what I call him. So Ticket Drew uh, says WWE are planning to reunite the NWO when Hogan returns to the company. I've been asked a couple of times, he says, Drew, uh, if I think the NWO is coming back with Hogan, Hall, and Nash, he wrote on Twitter. No, I don't think they will have another run on the roster, but as active wrestlers, uh, but you might see them on the network or a one-off sometime soon. Obviously, the New World Order, we're never going to return to have another run in the WWE. They are far too old for that. But as Ticket Drew notes, they would likely be back as part of a network show. And Hogan, Hall, and Nash would likely make a one-off appearance as the famous stable. That would make sense as reports have been suggesting that Hogan's locker room apology was actually filmed as part of a WWE Network special as well. I would not be surprised. What did I tell you just minutes ago? Hogan is going to make WWE money. So that's why they brought him back. It's a business move. Clearly... They are making moves in this Hogan business venture partnership once again. Hogan will probably be back with the NWO, not on television. The NWO needs to remain dead. We do not need to see the NWO. Okay, it's a dead concept, well past its prime. Enough with the nostalgia bullshit. Could I see Hogan and the NWO on a table for three? Absolutely. Absolutely. Are we going to see a Hogan 24 documentary? Probably. Are Hall and Nash going to be a part of that? Probably. Hogan tweeted on Instagram or, or, or Instagrammed and, and tweeted or his tweets have been filled with NWO innuendos. And Hogan made an Instagram post about Hall and Nash being at his beach shop. Doors were closed to the public and they had a camera crew there. What were they doing? They were filming for the network. So Hogan is going to be back. Just wait for it. It's going to happen. Do I care that he's back? I don't give a fuck that Hogan's back. I couldn't give a single fuck about Hulk Hogan or what he does. But the potential for everything that I just mentioned is a high probability. Maybe Hogan becomes a GM. Maybe Kurt Angle sees his day end on Monday Night Raw, has his job terminated, and we get Hogan to GM Monday Night Raw. Could happen. Maybe we see Hogan as a special guest referee. Could happen. You know? We'll see what happens, man, but I'm going to go with Ticket Drew and say, yes, Hogan will be back on television. Imminently. We just don't know when. 
who I am glad is back on TV, is Randy Orton. Randy Orton and his heel turn is being carefully crafted by WWE Creative. Wow, they're putting thought and creativity into something. Good on you, Road Dog. I seen a tweet yesterday about uh, me and Road Dog. Some goon says he lost all respect for me because I asked Road Dog for a job. Listen, you weren't there. Brian Goolish was there. I didn't ask Road Dog specifically for a job. So I love how people said that they lost respect for me because I asked Road Dog for a job. And that Road Dog unblocked me on Twitter, and now I'm sucking Road Dog's dick. First of all, you weren't there, and I didn't ask Road Dog for a job. I merely asked, hey, I want to make you aware of something. On top of what I normally do on Off the Script, I am calling commentary for House of Glory, which is owned by the Amazing Red. And I would like to know whom I could get some clips of my commentary to, just in case, and I joked, just in case... Vic Joseph needs a replacement on 205 Live. That's what I said. Yeah, but I'm sucking dick. Remain salty. That road dog knew who I was without actually even meeting me in person before. I'm sorry that I'm well known and you plebeians are not. And I'm actually very humble that road dog knows who I am. I'm actually... Fucking on cloud nine, that road dog knows who I am. Do you know what that means to me? It means I'm doing something right. It means that somebody in WWE knows who I am. And road dog knew I was sitting front row with Ghoulish. And Labar and Ticket Drew. He said someone who he works with closely mentioned to him that I was sitting front row. So more than one people know who I am in WWE. Oh, you can better believe I'm doing something right. No, but I'm losing respect because Road Dog knows who I am. It should be the opposite. It should be like, oh shit, JD's going places. But to the fucking goons and the haters and the and the off the script detractors who are probably Roman Reigns fans in disguise, I'm nothing but a fucking vile piece of narcissistic shit on YouTube. But Randy Orton. And his heel turn is uh, being carefully crafted. At long last, WWE fans have found a reason to look forward to watching Randy Orton live. And just wreck havoc like he was when he was the legend killer. It's no secret why he finally turned heel, which means he can play his strengths again to become a focal point on SmackDown Live. There's no denying the Viper's run as a face was underwhelming and boring, even though he was able to capture the WWE Championship on multiple occasions. Instead... WWE had Orton return from an injury to Extreme Rules where he targeted Jeff Hardy after Jeff Hardy lost the United States Championship to Shinsuke Nakamura in less than five seconds. Well, sidebar, Nakamura and Jeff Hardy was officially confirmed today for SummerSlam. Randy Orton not thrown into that match with two weeks left to go. So right now, it's just a mere one-on-one match with Orton being out of the United States Championship picture. And right now, WWE focusing on just Nakamura and Jeff Hardy. Since then, he's made it's he, since then he's made it his mission to make Hardy's life a living hell. He also gained plenty of praise for his promo on SmackDown Live last week. In typical heel fashion, he took aim at the charismatic Enigma. He had an issue with John Cena's constantly colored, changing merchandise, Brock Lesnar's part time schedule, and took a dig at the Bullet Club for stealing the too sweet gesture. It's now thought that the Viper will be placed in a triple threat match against Hardy and Nakamura at SummerSlam for the United States Championship. However, uh, that now has been revealed, like I said, as a one-on-one match for now. And his heel turn is being crafted rather intelligently by WWE SmackDown creative. Last week, it was revealed that Orton had pushed for a heel turn as it's the role he prefers and the company always wanted him to be a villain. However, the source has added that the company has taken previous reactions into account this time. In the past, the audience started to cheer Orton, despite him playing a dastardly heel all the time. This then forced the creative team to turn him into a face, so that it made sense for him to be cheered. This time, though, the creative team has carefully selected Hardy as the one that Orton would attack. This was done because Hardy is by far one of the company's strongest faces. 
to this day, both in the arenas and his, and his merchandise sales. With Orton targeting somebody as popular as Jeff, the creative team felt like it was the best way for Orton to generate natural heel heat. Although, considering fans are loving Orton as a heel, it won't be a surprise if he continued to be cheered. Uh, if he can get his hands on AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan, though, that's a different story. I mentioned this, and I'm not going to be mentioning this again uh, this weekend. I mentioned it already in uh, yesterday's part one. This is great. Uh, because to the hardcore fans, Randy, Randy Orton's being respected. People like me respect Randy Orton for playing just a fucking great heel. The guy's got it down brilliantly. You know, that's the role that he was born to play. That type of villain, that type of heel. So people like me, fans of this show, uh, who like Randy Orton are going to, you know, respect his work. With the other side to the casuals, you know, Randy Orton is doing such a good job that uh, I mentioned... He's going to be the type of villain and the type of heel that gets so underneath a casual skin that he's going to make kids cry. He's going to really make uh, a revenge match with Jeff Hardy all that much more special to those people. Uh, Randy Orton is doing such a good job that he's going to force mothers to take the TVs away from their sons or daughters who are watching this show who are fans of Jeff Hardy because of the dastardly, sick, demonic shit that this guy's doing. Fingers and earlobes, ripping fucking pendants off, wiping face paint off, just acting like a fucking complete psychopath. Randy Orton is doing everything right. For the hardcore fans and for the casual fans, it is a great thing. Like the report said, watch when we get Orton in styles. Randy Orton ain't going to be cheered when he, go, when he goes one-on-one with AJ Styles. We may appreciate that as fans, as hardcore fans, but... The majority of the audience are going to side with AJ Styles on that one. Same thing with Daniel Bryan. Randy Orton is a huge part of SmackDown Live in the last three weeks, and he's probably one of the best parts of SmackDown Live since coming back at Extreme Rules. Kudos to WWE for playing this and carefully choosing who and when he comes back. I love that type of logic and thought and mindset. I love when WWE actually puts their mind to something, or the select few people in this company that actually do put their mind to something. See how great it works out? See what happens when you think about something, and you execute it? It makes sense. This Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy thing, makes sense. The only thing I don't get is how him and Nakamura really haven't uh, had a urge to go one-on-one with each other yet, or, or, or Randy Orton have the urge to fucking RKO Nakamura, or Nakamura have the urge to Kinshasa Randy Orton. Right now, they're staying far away from each other. That's the next intricate part of this storyline. When is Randy Orton going to attack Nakamura? You know? But you got to be careful, though. The reason why he hasn't done it is because Nakamura's a heel. If Randy Orton attacks Nakamura, he may get more positive reaction because Nakamura's a heel. That's why he hasn't attacked Nakamura. That's why he's only focusing his attack on Jeff Hardy. Great stuff, man. I love it. I think it's fantastic. We are going to do one more story here, man, and then I'm going to get out of here. I don't want to keep it, uh, I don't want to go over like an hour and a half like I did yesterday. I want to keep it about an hour, you know. Friday's usually the longer episode. Uh, the Saturday, Sunday shows, about one hour. I think it's a good, a good length. We're going to end with this one, and my girl Becky has a brain. My girl Becky is in the same boat as JD. Becky Lynch realizes the one big problem. For the women's tag team titles, Becky Lynch is currently on the uphill in WWE over on SmackDown Live. Maybe. We'll see what happens at SummerSlam. Becky Lynch will participate in a triple threat match for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship at SummerSlam. Lynch will challenge the current title holder, Trash Mella, and her best friend, Charlotte Flair. The action goes down at the Barclays Center on August 19th. Lynch was recently interviewed by the Wrestling Compadres podcast to talk about several topics. How do they get these fucking WWE stars? You know, send some over my way. I'm a respectable guy. Anyway, WWE would never give me anybody, but I'm doing good with House of Glory. One such topic was the rumored WWE women's tag team titles in the midst of the women's revolution and WWE evolution pay-per-view. Fans and female competitors have been calling for the addition of new titles. She pointed out the one issue with the possibility of adding tag team titles, and she said that there's a bit of a shallow side to the women's division. I quote, I am constantly thinking about it and brainstorming and pitching for it, even if I am not involved with it. I still think that it would be a wonderful step in the women's progression. 
When I say involved in it, I say that because I'm going after the women's championship, and that is where I want to be. But in the future, that is where I want to be, especially in the future. We all have these women in the Mae Young Classic. We have so many girls and have a, such a deep roster. We still have a shallow side. Not shallow, but there are a few women on either side of Raw and SmackDown. We probably have 8 to 10 on either side, so that is kind of tricky to do a tag team title and a women's title. But if we combine and go through all different things and connect, not sure if that's possible, but who knows. Becky wants tag team titles. You know, she really didn't give a reason as to why she was pushing for them. She was pushing for them because it's a great thing for the women. But you can't really push for something and say it would be great if there's no plan to execute it. Becky Lynch realizes that the women's divisions on Raw and SmackDown are incredibly shallow. She was very generous in saying 8 to 10. It's more like 4 to 5. Not everybody is featured. Not everybody deserves to be featured. Half of these rosters are complete garbage. Daniel Brock, Alicia Fox, you know, women like that don't really have a place on television. WWE needs to get this right. If they're going to do tag team titles, which are imminent, Ticket, Ticket Drew already told me he, he knows the designs are, are there, they're completed, they're coming. If, if, if WWE wants this to work, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't want to sound like a broken record, it needs to be across Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. It needs to go through NXT because you need to bring awareness to NXT. It's a great thing to have an NXT because you get some of the women in NXT, who probably won't ever be featured on Monday Night Raw in a prominent role, it gives them a hope and an opportunity to be featured in a prominent role in front of new eyes. It's great if you're watching Raw and SmackDown Live and you get to see a Bianca Belair on Monday Night Raw because of those tag team titles. Who's Bianca Belair? Why is she so good? Where does she come from? Do you get my point? It's a great thing if WWE executes it. Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Those championship belts need to be revolving on all three brands. Then WWE needs to go and fix the tag team division for the men and do the same thing for the men. They need to be spread out across Raw and SmackDown only. That's it. You don't include NXT because NXT got their own tag team division. Raw and SmackDown need to be combined for the tag team titles. Mid-card and the main event could be separate brands. They could be separate entities. You already went as far as to make one pay-per-view every month, which are dual-branded. So why not give me this? You already went one step ahead already by doing that. Not going to really make much of a difference if you do revolving titles for the women and revolving titles for the men in the tag team division. Not going to make a difference at all. It's only going to make sense. It's only going to make things appear a lot better. Obviously, you're going to get some people thinking that the brand split should be automatically just ended at that point. Maybe combine all the rosters and, and, and all the divisions. Not right now. Let's worry about one thing at a time. Let's, let's fix one thing at a time. When WWE goes to Fox and they want to add more star power to Fox and, and bolster the rating over there and make sure that the rating is where it needs to be, then maybe we get the brand split coming to an end. But for now, if we're going to intro introduce Raw, uh, Women's and SmackDown, Women's Tag Team Championships, they can't be on separate brands. They need to be together and the Women's Division needs to be fused or there needs to be one set of titles revolving around all three brands. Simple. I would not mind that if done that way. That's the only way it's going to work. And NXT needs to be included. I don't want to hear any ifs, ands, or buts. I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you so very much for all your support. Follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. And I will see you guys tomorrow for part three of Off the Script. We're going to talk about Brock Lesnar and why he attacked Kurt Angle on Monday Night Raw. We're also going to talk about plans for Dean Ambrose and Jason Jordan to return to Raw. WWE finally has concrete plans to bring these guys back. And Wade Barrett is the door open for a WWE return. We're going to talk about all that stuff tomorrow on Off The Script. Please, if you guys want to support the show, you guys can definitely get your t-shirts. Barbershopwindow.com slash Off The Script. I believe there's a sale going on. Visit the website. Save 20% off. They're going to give you a coupon code just for visiting the site. Go on to barbershopwindow.com slash off the script and save yourself some money. Harry's.com slash script. Audibletrial.com slash off the script. And Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Remember, folks, off the script tomorrow, 5 p.m. Be here on YouTube. As always, I'm JD. And also, don't forget, 
Roman Reigns. He's still not over. <laughs> oh my God, I cracked myself up, man. I absolutely cracked myself up.